All right, it's Christopher Isherwood, the novelist, and I don't want to talk too much other than to remind you that writing a book is a good question. Somebody today on YouTube uh, was interviewing uh, an author, and they said, what happens for you in your writing process? Do you just start writing and the story comes out of your head onto the paper? Or do you maybe um, start writing down names of characters? You like go to the dictionary and you turn to a page at random and you pick a word to be someone's last name. And then you go maybe to a baby name book to get a first name for this person. And then that's one of your characters and you do this for like 17 characters. And then you go to a interior design catalog and you look at the different rooms in the catalog oh I'm gonna have a scene in the kitchen and the kitchen's gonna look like this or maybe I'm gonna change out uh, I'm, gonna make the, I'm gonna just change it somehow uh, is that how you do it? Just a question for an author, how do you write? How do you get these things put together? The answer is, depends on the author, I suppose. Maybe they do it both ways. I don't know. Somebody wants to tell you, way back in about seventh grade, maybe you played the game where you had I don't know, you had maybe eight people in a circle. And you start off with the game. The first person in says a sentence. I went to the bank. person next to them has got to add on to the story. So they say, uh, and I saw a bank teller with a blue dress. Third person says, and the blue dressed bank teller told me that she was married to a Mexican. Next person says, and then I said, that's fine and dandy, but I need 50 bucks out of my account. Next person says, and I want it snappy. And the next person says, oh, by the way, I need to make an appointment with the bank manager. The next person says, because I'm going to take out a loan for a million dollars to buy a house in Canada. And the next person says, if I had my druthers, I would probably not want to live in Canada where it's so expensive. Um, so, um, oh dear. Period. And the next person would say, nevertheless, I am here at the bank in Canada um, and um, they gave me my 50 bucks. Thank you. Um, will the bank manager call me or will I call them? Next person. And it goes around and you, that's how you can do a story with a bunch of people. Is it a good story? <laughs> it's interesting because you don't know where it's going to go. That's how it is for me with these videos. I don't know what I'm going to talk about usually. Sometimes I got the props, you know. I got the hats. And how do I choose which hats are going to come out? Um, I just reach for them. You know, the hand reaches out and it grabs the hat. I'm not thinking ahead of time, I want that hat. Usually, I might, it might be given to me in my head. That's the hat. You know, here's my hats. It might be given to me that, that red hat on the left, far left, that's the hat that I want. And then I reach out, and then this hat is the one that I pick up. It's called ad lib, but I'm not doing it consciously with my consciousness. I just don't know where the body's going to go. And when I start talking, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. But sometimes I do, it's given to me, you know, or sometimes the body just goes and gets something as a prop. But my friends, um, Clancy and Bear and Smarmy, 
said, you know, I was I was upstairs in the bathroom, and they said, you know, it's very curious to us how a chicken manages to lay as many eggs as they do. And then they kind of gave me, I don't know if they gave me, eh, it's very difficult, but anyway, it was given for us to consider how easy it how easy is it for a chicken to lay an egg? Given the vast size of a egg in relation to the size of a chicken. Seems like it's... Um, anyway, I did a whole video about uh, chickens and eggs. You can look it up. Okay, I'm gonna. I didn't. It, it was too long for Instagram. Instagram TV is only 15 minutes, so I'm gonna give you the short version. Okay, this is the everyday magic of chicken. Everyday magic of a chicken. Okay, so I've got this uh, book of knowledge. It's an encyclopedia from about the 1930s, 1940s, let's say. And uh, so I took a look in here, and uh, this is gonna be more difficult. Okay, so here we have chickens, and this is a laying chicken up here. And the book says, the book says, these laying chickens are smaller than the chickens that are used for, like, meat chickens. They're smaller than those chickens. So you've got a small bird. And it says in the internet, that I looked it up, that one of these laying hens eats three quarters of a cup of chicken meal that's this much so I've got a one of these is a half a cup the big one and the little one is a quarter of a cup so that's how much chicken feed a little chicken eats in a day and this book from the 1930s, Fuss Online, said um, a good chicken layer lays over 300 eggs. 310 was the record in the 1930s, and there's probably more now. So, here's an egg. And you'll see that an egg is basically half a cup, a little bit less than half a cup. So, if it eats this much food... Half a cup worth goes and makes an egg a day, and that has how much uh, the chicken uses to keep the chicken body going. A little tiny chicken. How many of these big eggs could it have growing at one time? Because it's a hard shell, remember? It's a hard shell. I mean, somebody's going to say, well... It was a soft shell, and then the hard calcium comes later, and maybe it grew. And the last thing that happened was the calcium layer. Still, it would have to have, like, tomorrow's egg inside that little chicken. And the day after, I mean, how long does it take to get a, an egg to grow this big? How many of these eggs has it got lined up inside its little body, it's inside of his body must be full of eggs. That's all it could be in order to grow an egg a day. And then I use the example of if you skin your knee or you cut your finger, how long does it take to heal growing cells as a human? It takes a long time to heal just a little bit of skin. A long time for a human to do that. And yet a little tiny chicken like this can produce one of these a day. I call it everyday magic. I call it it's pretty it's it's a magic thing. It's unbelievable. There was an old um fairy tale about the golden goose that laid golden eggs or something, I don't know. It's just like, mm, that's what it's like. There's no room in a little tiny chicken. There's no room for a week's worth of eggs to be growing. They're tiny. 
They're too tiny to eat as meat, and yet it pops one of these out a day. It's impossible. And then the next thing I talked about uh, were some other examples of things that were impossible when it came to um, animals. I talked about how crows that live um, in my neighborhood, I live in Canada, where it's winter for eight months a year all the time. So all winter long, there's crows and they spend all day not eating chicken feed, not eating three quarters of a cup of chicken feed, which is for a little chicken in an enclosed heated environment. These crows, um, they go sit up on the telephone wires all day long in 20 below weather. Day after day after day, I don't see them like leaving to go eat. There's like not feeding stations for them. They sit there, they fly around, and they're not dead. They fly around in the cold. And I can't stay out in that cold even with a big parka all day. It's too cold. What are they eating? Where are they getting the food? The crab apples are frozen solid. You can't bite into the crab apples that are frozen on the tree. There's not that many mountain berries. I mean, they're all frozen. You couldn't crack them open. What are the birds eating? I just shake my head and I went through, you know, it's humans that are feeding them. No, because they're not. They're just flying around. There's no, and the same crows I see on my street day after day after day. They're not going to feeding stations. They're not here. They are just simply hanging out in trees and telephone wires all day long, howling cold, huge winds. They're not eating, and yet they survive for months and months and months. And what are they doing for water? Everything's frozen. Are they eating little bits of snow? Everything is frozen solid. And then I said, well, they're going to a park, and there's a human there that's giving them some food. There was one lady in my town who was giving them, she'd bring a little grocery bag, plastic bag, with some stale bread. And she brought it to a nearby park every day. She would go there, and she would, you know, leave little bits of bread for the birds. I don't know. How many slices of bread would she leave? Let's say she left six slices every day. And, you know, in my neighborhood, there's easily 40 of these crows. That's not enough food for these crows. Well, feeding stations, I've got them from in my backyard, and they're for little birds. They're too, they're not designed for crows. They're too big of a bird. The crows don't eat there. The crows, oh, and then I said, well, the city, um, somebody ratted it out, the lady, and then the city put, said, they passed a bylaw, you cannot feed the birds in the winter, mean-spirited motherfuckers at the city, fucking nasty people. They put up a sign in that park, and it said, don't feed the birds bread, because bread is not nutritious. And I go, excuse me, I eat bread. Bread is full of starch, it's full of nutrition. This is not good enough for the birds or something, their digestive system or something. The birds were eating it before and they weren't dropping dead when the lady was coming by. Mean-spirited, mean-spirited city people. Horrible humans are horrible, horrible creatures. Nevertheless, that lady has not been feeding uh, the crows for three years and they're still coming around. But no food out in the 20 below all day long not eating. How do they survive? It's magic. It's magic. And um, in the end, you want the conclusion? Star Trek The Next Generation, the holodeck, our reality is the holodeck of Star Trek The Next Generation. It's the only explanation of how these things can happen. Computer-generated reality, that's what we live in, so you're a computer-generated hologram, and so am I. We're all run by a computer behind the scenes somewhere, and uh, therefore we're androids. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, share this one out.